All right, little air filter update. So here's the silicon bend we purchased, and that's the piece of pipe. And what we intended was for that bend to go on the turbo, and it would uh, fit right into the air filter, and the pipe would basically just support the silicon, and then we'd throw a hose clamp on it, and we'll be good. Well, none of that worked. So nothing wrong with the pipe, but this bend, the silicon is way too thin. So you can see the edge of it. So it's way too loose when I try to put it on the air filter. It's never gonna, that's never gonna work. So now we're thinking about trying to just make this work somehow. So you can see right now it looks okay, but this little silicon's tapered. So if I move this, it just falls off. So don't know if we're gonna do this, but one thought is to just figure out a way to bond those two together. Some type of, you know, silicon based adhesive or something. And just bond essentially that piece of silicon to that piece of presumably rubber and then just clamp the silicon to the turbo and be done we may do that uh, I just got to look into it and see if I can find a suitable adhesive that's cheap and would do the job so we may end up doing that for a filter but uh yeah unfortunately this stuff didn't work out like we'd hoped so yeah if y'all know of something let me know all right guys so we got to figure out what coilovers we're going to run and I'm leaning, I know we said we we're going budget, so since we're trying to keep the budget, you know, kind of low, we figured Zetas is probably a good option. Uh, so apparently they make a race version that gives you four to five inches on your pinch weld adjustment. So the car sitting now with the front is showing five inches on the pinch weld. And it looks pretty good. I kind of like this. I could see it being lower. I think the back is lower. So I probably have the coilovers adjusted all wrong. But anyway... I have my daily driver is a it's a C63. Anyway, I measured it and it's only like four and five eighths inches. And I've been driving that for years and I don't have issues. So I can kind of imagine driving this at a similar ride height without issues. So I think we're gonna go something like that, which means it'll be a little bit lower than it's showing right now. And we'll probably end up with the Zeta race. Or I think we will. I'm tempted to buy it. The problem is they don't have them in stock. And I don't really know what the lead times look on their wheels. I am sorry on their coilovers, but I know on their wheels it used to be horrible. So that's uh, something we got to figure out. Another thing that just comes to mind after seeing the car sit low like this is it needs a wing on the back. I think it, I think it could look good. It needs a paint job and some other stuff to clean it up. But man, I think a black a black uh, wing on the back to go with the wheels and tires. This could look good, but uh. Let me know what y'all think. And just figured I'd show you how it definitely looks different with the wide tires and sitting lower. Definitely it looks more race car. All right, you guys, take it easy. Hey guys, welcome back. So a few episodes ago, we uh, had trouble putting our springs on the factory shocks after two days of work and we realized we were gonna have to buy some coilovers. And like I said in the video, we're kind of looking for something budget just to get by and you know, we don't really need anything crazy. So, kinda just bought some Zeta race coilovers with the billet mounts. So, yep, $2,500 on fire. But, let me tell you what happened. So, I got a friend of mine, his name's Chad. He's pretty damn knowledgeable when it comes to coilovers. I've known this guy for years in the Miata world He's actually run several different sets of coilovers and he's researched them quite a bit. So he's, he knows these things pretty well. And when I talked to him, I kind of told him, you know, my situation. And he immediately said, well, really, you should just buy the Zetas. And we kind of went over some other options. He did throw, he had some options. He's like, here, here's a brand for, you know, this price, that price. He kind of gave me some good options at different price ranges. And I looked at every one he recommended and I kind of knew, he's talked to me before about uh, running Zetas, and apparently these are just really good uh, dampers and good spring setup. So we decided that, basically to rely on an expert. So I'm not really a suspension guy. I'm, I'm pretty good with motors, transmissions, fabrication, things like that. I've got a lot of experience doing stuff like that. Uh, also, as an engineer, I can design stuff and make things and blah, blah, blah. But I don't really know suspension all that great. I know that there's a lot that goes into making a suspension good, but I don't actually, you know, I'm not really going to design a suspension or a coilover or something. 
maybe some braces to stiffen the chassis, but that'd be about the extent of it. So I can't really, I don't want to put a lot of time experimenting, trying to make something work on suspension. And I need something that, I just need to buy something that works is really what it comes down to. And yeah, I decided to pull the trigger. So goodbye. It turned out to be right at $2,500 with shipping. Well, actually shipping's free. But anyway, I got these little billet things on the top. I have no clue if I need those, but they were shiny. And that seemed like a good reason to buy them. So we have those. Uh, don't know when I'm, they, you can see here it says estimated ship date the 26th. So that's like next Monday or something. So hopefully they ship sooner. I talked to, I did email these guys and asked them some questions and they said that it should ship this week, hopefully. So we'll see. I've been having terrible luck with uh, expensive parts shipping on time. So if these ship before like September, they'll be doing better than my camshafts. But uh, yeah, anyway, I figured I'd give you guys a quick update. We're going to have Zeta race coilovers and... One of the cool things about these, let me scroll a little bit. So these say they're optimized for four to five inch pinch weld height. So we measured my car and I ended up lowering it. I think I got it down to about five and a half inches and it actually looked pretty good. And I could tell like maybe lower it a little more, it'd look even better. And uh, so this seems like the right ones and they're adjustable. It says 20 different uh, settings, which is awesome. And you can see the specs, but from talking to my friend, uh, he confirmed a lot of this stuff, and these are really the way to go. It's just a, it's just a good option, and we ended up with the 800-500. You can see down here it says 40 to 100 or 200 treadwear. So we got two. I think we got 200 treadwear on it now, and we may go to some 100 treadwears for the next set of tires. So it looks like we got the right spring setup. That's what my friend recommended. That's also what 949 recommended. Uh, it sounds right. So I think we're gonna be good. So yeah. How about that? Uh, kind of blew the budget. Uh, we're going to have to... So what's going to end up happening is we had to buy these, so some other expensive things are going to have to get pushed instead. I did have some other expensive things that spin at higher RPMs planned. I wonder if y'all can figure out what that was. Uh, so that'll get pushed a little bit, but it's still going to happen. It'll just happen a little later. But uh, that's kind of good. We'll have some nice coilovers. We'll get some other parts coming soon. And... Uh, the great thing about this is we can just bolt these up and use them. We don't have to fabricate and design and all that kind of stuff. So that'll let us do our fab and design work somewhere else. Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, y'all take it easy. All right, y'all. Quick little update on the planning side of things. So our hose crimpers here, our trans fluid came in. We got our coilover spec in order today. We also added a new thing, buy a fan for the trans cooler since we're gonna put that in the back of the car. So we got that ordered. That's a, you can see there, 160 bucks for a fan. That's with shipping, but it's expensive and it's just a single 10 inch fan. So I figured I'd give y'all a quick thing on that. Uh, so I hate overheating. And here's the thing. What happens if you put a fan on your car that doesn't move enough air? Well, it might overheat. But what happens if you put a fan that moves too much air? Well, nothing bad. You just have extra cooling. So it's better to have too much cooling than not enough. And this thing is going to be in the trunk of the car, so it's not going to have access to cool air. It's going to be warmed up from the, you know, nearby exhaust. The air that it's pulling in is likely coming off of, like, hot pavement, and it's sucking in air that was uh, previously run through the intercooler and the radiator and all that. So, you know, on a, on a hot summer day, 140 degree air hitting the trans cooler is totally possible. So, and if we want to keep the trans at, say, 180 degrees, that's only a 40 degree difference between, you know, air temperature and trans temperature. Now, granted, we have a gigantic trans cooler, but that's only a 40 degree difference on a really hot day. So we went ahead and got a giant fan. Uh, I have no regrets. I don't mind paying money for stuff like that. So, you know, if that fan keeps my transmission alive, I mean, the trans cost a fortune, so it's totally worth it. But uh, anyway... That's our parts. Let's see if we got, I don't even remember if we updated this side. This side's probably out of date. No, we did a little bit of updating. Uh, so this, our silicone stuff, all the parts did come in, but they don't work. Uh, we're gonna try like gluing something together. I need to work on that. Coilovers, yeah, I need to update that part. Da, 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 da. Let's see. The brace, we actually got that crossed off the list. 
The uh, front brace is done. The AC condenser is now in progress, and actually, I need to post another video on that. I, I, unfortunately, I haven't made any progress on it, but I did figure out. Okay, I didn't. I didn't build anything, but I figured out how I'm going to do it. So, the brackets for this are going to be. We don't have to weld. We can actually make brackets that'll bolt to the car, and then bolt to the condenser. So that's kind of cool. And then I put the brackets for the trans cooler in progress. That's kind of wishful thinking. We're in the design phase of that. We're getting an idea of how we're going to build it. Looks like uh, I just put brackets here, but we're actually going to need a bracket to bracket or brackets to bolt it to the car, and then we're also going to need a fan shroud that we'll have to fab up. And I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet. Still, still kind of thinking about that. But uh, yeah, just a quick thing on that. So whenever I'm trying to figure out how to do something. I try to think it over a little bit and not get in a huge hurry. So we're going to get this fan shroud built. I probably need to order material to make it. Uh, we're, you know, the first thoughts would be some kind of sheet aluminum and just either bend it up or weld it up or rivet it together, or, you know, something like that. And then one thought I had was, what if I designed a simple pr shroud and just had it 3D printed? Because then I might get designed something that's simple really quickly and then just click a few buttons and have it ordered and then bolt it on when it gets here and be done not have to do the fabrication part and I'm gonna look into it a little more but I did a quick search and it looks like common 3d filler common 3d printer filaments may not be up to the task of the heat uh, or at least it would keep be kind of borderline like if I made the shroud out of ABS it might be okay but then it might not be and you know given the reliability of this I can't I can't run something that's a maybe. I know aluminum will work, and it's really not that hard to do. So we're probably going to end up making it out of metal. But I just thought it'd look. It would be kind of cool in the future if we could, you know, print some stuff and just bolt it on the car, uh, you know, just to make things easy. That'd be nice. Also, it's good for prototyping. If you can print, you know, if you have a design and you're like, hmm, I wonder if this will work, just print it in plastic and then see if it works. And if it does, you say, okay, cool. I know all these dimensions are good. Now I'll go through the effort to make a metal part, whether it's a machine part or a hand fabricated part or welded or whatever. So 3D printers can be useful. Even if you don't make a final part, you can still make prototypes and do fitment checks and stuff like that, you know. But uh, anyway, that's kind of where we're at on that. You can see we still got a decent amount of stuff on this list. Progress has been kind of slow, but hopefully it's going to pick up. We got the weekend coming up. We're going to try to we're going to try to get rolling on this. Hopefully we can knock out a lot of this, either knock this some of this stuff out or make some good progress on it. But uh, a lot of this stuff like roll fenders, you know, that's not going to take too long. Install wheel studs. Man, I saw a video on how to do the fronts and the guy just knocks them out with a hammer. And I already have the tool for installing these. So, you know, this is probably like a 30 minute job. Uh, same here. That's 30 minutes. That's a couple hours. That's maybe two or three hours. Don't know, but... Anyway, you can see, hopefully we'll get a lot of this stuff knocked out over the next few days. Anyway, that's all I got. Y'all take it easy.